Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, this is me, Pradeep Order, and in today's lecture, I'm going to talk about proteins. So let's at first define what proteins are. So generally speaking, proteins, they are the polymers of different kinds of amino acids. So there are about 20 amino acids. So in a protein, uh, these amino acids are incorporated. So in protein, these amino acids, they are linked by peptide bonds. And we will discuss how these peptide bonds are formed. And these proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur, because these are also present in amino acids. Whereas though phosphorus is not present in amino acids, they are often incorporated after proteins, nascent proteins are made uh, through the process known as phosphorylation. So you can look at this primary structure of the protein. So we have different amino acids here, which are bonded together by peptide bonds. And these are a few representative examples of amino acids. So as we said, we, they contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur in methionine and cysteine. And phosphorus is incorporated uh, during phosphorylation. So we talked that, we said that proteins, they are the polymers of amino acids. So what are amino acids? So amino acids, these are the basic unit of proteins. That means they are the monomer of proteins. And they all, these amino acids, they have in common acidic part, that is carboxylic group, and amino part, that is NS2 group. So if you look at the structure of this amino acid, so it has amino group and COOH group or carboxylic group, and there is one hydrogen to fulfill the uh, valency of carbon, that is both one, two, three, and the remaining bond is with side chain. So these are, our uh, side chain can be different in amino acids. So for example, if it is uh, serine, then it will be CS2OH. If it is uh, threonine, then this will be the side group or R. In case of methionine, it has CS2, CS2, yes, CS3. So this is what is R. So depending on the amino acid type, these R groups, they vary. And there are 20 amino acids which are found in nature. So this, that means we have 20 different R groups that define different amino acids. Otherwise, all the amino acids has these backbones in common. And they are soluble in water as well. And let's talk about how peptide bonds are formed. So for example, this is, this is an amino acid one. So it has R1, it's, it's side chain, and it has uh, R2 in amino acid two. It's R2 is side chain, next side chain. So we don't, we don't uh, consider here which amino acid it is. Whatever, whichever amino acid it is, the process of formation of peptide bond is the same. So it has NS terminal here, NS3 terminal, and it has carboxylic terminal here. Now, during peptide bond formation, the CONS bond is formed, and one water molecule is released, and this CONS bond is known as peptide bond. So when two amino acids are joined together by union of this carboxylic group and amino group, then, uh, then it will form a bond known as peptide bond, which is simply CONS bond. And during this process, one water molecule or S2 is released out. So we have now two amino acids here, and we call it dipeptide. If there were three amino acids, that means if these dipeptide forms peptide bond, with another amino acid, then we call tripeptide. So you might be confused that dipeptide means there is two peptide bond, but that is wrong. Dipeptide means there are two amino acids forming a peptide bond. And if it is tripeptide, then it has three amino acids with two peptide bonds and so on. Okay, so now let's move to classification of protein. So on the basis of chemical nature, we have simple proteins, uh, we have conjugated proteins and we have derived proteins. So let's begin with simple protein. So these simple proteins, they 
are made up of only amino acids. And uh, when these proteins are hydrolyzed, then they will release only the amino acids by which they, they are made. So the examples include albumin, for example, egg albumin, globulin, for example, immunoglobulin, which provides immunity. And also stone. Stone is very important protein, which um, which is associated with DNA. So this is the picture of stone octamor. So octamor means there are such eight units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and there is also another unit underneath it. So on this stone, we have DNA. This LO is the DNA type that is one together. And in euchromatin, you find some DNA that is quite relaxed. But there is between two stone octamers, you can find a short length of DNA. If it is uh, not completely packed together, then we call it euchromatin. But it's, if it is packed together, that means these stone units, they, uh, they get closely packed, then we call it heterochromatin. So in such heterochromatin, they are quite dense and euchromatin, they are uh, not so dense compared to heterochromatin. And there are also protamines, which are also the uh, simple proteins because they will only release uh, the amino acids during their hydrolysis. Okay, so the next is conjugated protein. So in conjugated protein, so conjugate means to join, conjugal means uh, married to life. Right, so if somebody wishes you happy conjugal life, that means happy married life. So conjugated protein means the simple proteins, they are combined with non-protein substances. And we also call non-protein substances as prosthetic group. For example, glycoprotein. So in glycoprotein, we have protein associated with carbohydrate. Uh, this, these glycoproteins we find in the plasma membrane or cell membrane, which we will discuss in, uh, in under cell biology. And there is lipoprotein. So lipoprotein has lipids associated protein. And we have nucleoprotein, where protein is associated with nucleic acid. And the example that we talked about here, this is an example of nucleoprotein, because this DNA is nucleic acid, and this is tonic protein. So nucleic acid and protein, they are uh, forming a complex, and we call it nucleoprotein, which is again an example of conjugated protein. So this complex is an example of conjugated protein, whereas the histone itself is an example of simple protein. So now let's talk about derived protein. So these derived proteins, they, uh, if, you, if you take some simple or conjugated proteins, and if you hydrolyze it, in a controllable fashion, or uh, if you hydrolyze it partially, then they will form uh, shorter length polypeptides, and we call these uh, derived proteins. So, for example, this figure shows peptone powder. So, peptone is also produced from uh, partial hydrolysis of simple uh, conjugated protein. For example, uh, it can be soy protein, it can be meat protein, or it, there are others as well and similarly the proteolysis. So they may vary in the sense, but the mechanisms how they are produced or formed is the same. That is partial hydrolysis of simple or conjugated proteins. Okay, so this was about the uh, classification on the basis of chemical nature of proteins. But if you classify proteins on the basis of set, then we have fibrous protein and we have globular protein. So in fibrous protein, the shape is thread-like, or it is fiber-like. And they are insoluble in water. The examples include keratin, elastin, collagen. So this keratin is present in our hair. Elastin and collagen are present in our skin. The elasticity of our skin is due to elastin protein. So if you look at, if you look at this diagram, so this is collagen. You can see how they are formed looks like a thread and it is elastin protein it looks also like a thread however it is elastic that means it can uh, these arrows indicate that they can they can change the length uh, that which contributes to its elasticity 
Okay, so the other types of proteins on the basis of say it's globular proteins, and as the name implies, they are either oval or spherical in shape, and they are in such shape because of uh, rich presence of alpha helices. We will talk about what alpha helices are in the structures of proteins, and these are held together by hydrogen bonds and cohesive process forces. So cohesive forces means forces developed between like molecules. This is known as cohesive forces. And if it is between unlike forces, then we call it adhesive forces. And they are mostly soluble in water, for example, albumin, globulin, these are also found in our blood. So if you look at the structure of globular protein, so this is myoglobin. So myoglobin is a oxygen, is an oxygen carrying protein in muscle cells. Whereas this is hemoglobin, so this is an impact, this is structure that is shown with polypeptide chains here. This is what is hemoglobin, and this whole is a red blood cell. So you can see here hemoglobin residing at this chain inside the red blood cells. So this hemoglobin is also a globular protein, and these are alpha helices you can see. So myoglobin, it has practically eight different alpha helices, which I'm going to also talk about the structures of the protein topic. Okay, so we come here in the another topic, structure of protein. So proteins have four different structures. So the first one is primary structure. So primary structure of protein, it is basic, basic means. So if you have a primary structure of protein, then you can, you can fold it and then from secondary, then tertiary, and then you can combine subunits together and form a quaternary structure. So primary structure is basic because it is first formed and it's simply the linear sequence of amino acids. So which are held together by peptide bone. And we also say it is temporary because soon after, right? Uh, soon after it is formed, the protein is in its primary structure, but it will be folded uh, in endoplasmic reticulum and then it will gain a variety of different structures, which we will explain below. So in the primary structures, you need to remember that the amino acids are linked by the peptide bonds and therefore it is linear in shape because there is no folding yet. So only the bonds that are involved here is peptide bond. This is what is very critical in your writing. Okay, so if you look at here the structure of insulin. So if you forget about these disulfide bonds, because these disulfide bonds, they arise during a uh, tertiary structure. So if you forget this disulfide bond here, so insulin has two chains. So this is A chain and it has uh, 21 amino acids. And this is the sequence of amino acids. For example, this is glycine, isoleucine, valine, glutamic acid, glutamine, cysteine, and so on. And there is another chain known as B chain and it has uh, 30 amino acids. So this is, this sequence, linear sequence of amino acids, which are held together by peptide bond is the primary structure. So this is the primary structure of protein insulin chain A, and this is the primary structure of insulin chain B. Okay, so I hope you are clear with primary structure. Now let's move to secondary structure. So after this primary structure is formed in any protein, then secondary, structure is formed after the hydrogen bond formation on these primary structures. So hydrogen bond is formed between hydrogen and relatively, uh, relatively highly electronegative atoms, for example, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. But in case of proteins, we have, we have oxygen. So with the oxygen of one amino acid and hydrogen of another amino acid, hydrogen bonds are formed. So the secondary structure, they, they can be either in alpha helices or in beta acids. So for example, this is alpha helices and you can say it is in spiral cell. And you can see there are hydrogen bonds formed. So one here with these red dotted lines. And this is formed between the first amino acid and the fourth amino acid. So this is first, second, third, and then this is fourth. So there is hydrogen bond between first and fourth amino acids, and this results in its 
it's like bending uh, spiral inside. So for example, myoglobin it essentially has all the uh, half hydrogen. So this is a myoglobin structure. So these spiral structures, they, they represent alpha aloysis. And if you count these different colors of alpha aloysis, then you find them to be H. Okay, so uh, secondary structure could also be in beta seeds. So beta seeds has two or more different uh, amino acid chains that are bonded via hydrogen bonds. So it can be either anti-parallel or parallel. So in anti-parallel, so we have hydrogen bonds, they, they formed between the uh, adjoining, uh, not, not adjoining, but opposite amino acids. So this can be one and then two, and there can be other uh, chains of amino acids up to 10, and they will, uh, they will form hydrogen bonds. And since it is, the amino acids are tightened, they are not quite like it. So these are, these are, these are seen as six seeds. That's why we call them beta seeds. Okay, so the next level of structure of protein is tertiary structure. So they are again from, from the further folding of secondary structures. So we said in secondary structures, they only have hydrogen bonds. For example, this is hydrogen bond in beta seeds. This is hydrogen bonds in alpha helices. So if further other types of bonds are formed in the secondary structure of protein, then they form tertiary structures. So these bonds can be covalent bond, ionic bond, hydrophobic or van der Waals forces, and then uh, it can be also disulfide bond. Then this will be the tertiary structure of the protein. So we can see this is ionic bond formed between the charges. For example, this is negatively charged oxygen atom, and it has uh, NS3 plus. So there is the electrostatic attraction between these opposite charges forming ionic bond. So we can also have hydrophobic interaction because these methyl groups, these are bulkier groups, and if they uh, come together, if they fest together with each other, then they form, they have a, a different kind of force called hydrophobic uh, interaction can be developed. And there is hydrogen bond that it, we discussed in the secondary structure. And these, uh, if especially methionine and cysteine, uh, which contain acids or sulfur containing, amino acids, they uh, come pacing with each other, then the acids group will be oxidized and then it will form a disulfide one. This is we call acids, so single sulfide, two sulfide. Two, two sulfide means disulfide, and we call it disulfide linkage. So these are also found in the tertiary structure of the protein. Okay, so in the quaternary structure, we, we don't have further bonds formed. But what happens is that, for example, if this is one polypeptide and there is another polypeptide, and if they have uh, these two polypeptides, which we can also call subunits, and if they are joining together via hydrogen bonds, ionic bond, or disulfide bond, or other bonds, then we call it the quaternary structure of the protein. It is the most complex structure of the protein. And uh, we just said that the two polypeptides are the more, the two are more polypeptides, they can be either similar or dissimilar. So for example, to understand it better, let's look at the structure of hemoglobin. And hemoglobin has four polypeptide chains, and these are held together by ionic and hydrogen bonds. So this, this is a beta globin, beta globin, and there is alpha globin and alpha globin again. So we call it beta one, beta two, alpha one, alpha two, and we have uh, these, these uh, subunits are simply called polypeptide chains. They are joined or attached to one another via hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds. And so this could be the example of a quaternary structure of protein. So I hope you are also clear with the structures of the protein. So now let's move to the functions of the protein. So we have many different uh, functions of the proteins. So remembering, uh, just understanding few of these. So up to six, it's fine. So first function is that there are proteins which provide structure. For example, uh, in bone we have osin, in hair we have keratin. We also have keratin in the skin. We have elastin in the skin. We have also collagen in the basement membrane of basement membranes in the skin as well. 
So these take part in building of repairing tissues. And we also have intermediate proteins. So for example, uh, pepsin, myelase, they help in digestion of food. There are a variety of those. So almost all proteins are enzymes, except catalytic RNAs. Otherwise, all other enzymes are proteins. So many hormones, they uh, are also the proteins, though we have carbohydrate hormones, though we have steroid hormones, but many of the hormones are again proteins and they help in regulation of metabolism. For example, insulin is a sugar metaboli metabolizing hormone. And insulin is also a protein. And we looked already looked at its structure that it has 51 amino acids with 21 in 10 A and 30 amino acids in 10 B, which are linked uh, via disulfide bonds and other ones. Okay, so we also have transport proteins and we looked at the structure of hemoglobin and myoglobin and uh, uh, in these structures, central to them, they carry uh, oxygen and they can also carry carbon dioxide during, uh, during carrying a transport of the carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs. And plasma proteins, for example, prothrombin, this prothrombin actually converts to thrombin and then also fibrinogen, so they help in clotting of blood. And we also have actin and myosin, these are contractile proteins, so they help in locomotion. So if it's time you move your muscles, it's time you move your legs or hands, then uh, these contractile proteins such as actin and myosin are helping you to move or to locomote. So some proteins are storage proteins. So in the carbohydrates, we talked about glycogen starch, it's rich up with material. So some proteins do similar functions, uh, for example, Seizing of milk. And there are also antibodies of immunoglobulins, which are defensive proteins, and they fight against foreign bodies, including viruses, bacteria, and others. So, uh, so these vac vaccines are also simply the antibodies of immunoglobulins that, that protect us from diseases. And in our uh, eyes, we have in retina, we have rhodopsin and iodopsin pigments, which are also protein pigments, and they provide us with a different vision. And most importantly, though mentioned here at the last, last protein is also a source of energy. So it provides roughly the same, it's same amount of energy as carbohydrate, that is four kilocalorie per gram. Uh, it's provided by the protein. Okay, so now I have some assignment questions here. For example, define proteins, classify proteins, their structures and find functions. So please solve these questions uh, at your home. And also try attempting these very short questions, which will be uh, giving you one max if asked during your examinations. And if you are interested for, uh, in, uh, to see in trans level, in trans examination during your for your bachelor level entry, then there are some sample questions which you can practice. So you can just pause the video here and then try to solve these questions. So, okay, so, and finally, before I end this lecture, there is a project work for you to do at your home. So what you can do is that you collect some uh, food items which are commonly eaten, for example, baby food items, horlicks, or it can be bacterial growth media. If you don't have, then I can provide you the at least uh, image of a bacterial growth media label and plant tissue culture media, protein powders, protein bars and cakes, poultry and cattle seeds. And now, based on the information given over there, so you need to uh, calculate the concentration of the protein for 10 or 100 or even one gram of the food or feed items. And among the items you include in your project, list the ingredients of the food or feed items that contain the top three most concentrated protein in your project. And also suggest people, uh, so if there are, let's say, um, noodles, if there are let's say four or five different noodle brands, then suggest people which noodle brands give them the highest amount of 
protein if they inject the equal amount of the neurons and it could be biscuits cheese balls or even other other uh, products or other food or feed items okay so i hope you can do it and thank you everyone for listening to me so i end the lecture here bye bye stay safe and happy